Let's take a look at an example of determining the first and second derivative of an implicit function using implicit differentiation. Notice how this equation is not solved for y. That's why we'll apply implicit differentiation. While we could solve this for y, we will use implicit differentiation. So we'll determine the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So from this, we can determine the first derivative. Differentiating the derivative of x squared with respect to x would be 2x plus, now to differentiate x times y, we have to apply the product rule. So we'll have the first function, which is x, times the derivative of the second function, which is y. The derivative of y with respect to x would be 1 times dy dx. Remember, since it's in terms of y, we have this extra factor of dy dx because we're applying the chain rule, plus the second function, which is y, times the derivative of the first function, well, the derivative of x would be 1. And on the right side, derivative of 4 would be 0. So to determine the first derivative, we need to solve this for dy dx. So we'll go ahead and move 2x and y to the other side of the equation. So we'll have x times dy dx equals negative 2x minus y, and now we can divide both sides by x. So the first derivative, or dy dx, is going to be equal to negative 2x minus y divided by x. Now if we wanted to, we could factor out a negative in the numerator, so we'd have dy dx equals negative of the quantity 2x plus y divided by x. Now this is only half of the problem. We also want to determine the second derivative of y with respect to x. So now we'll take the derivative of the derivative to determine the second derivative. So now we'll differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x. And since we'll have to apply the quotient rule here, I'm going to go ahead and use this form of the first derivative. So the so the numerator is negative 2x minus y divided by x. So the derivative of the derivative with respect to x would be our second derivative, d squared y all over dx squared equals, and here's where we'll have to apply the quotient rule. So starting with the denominator, we'll have the denominator squared. And then in the numerator, we'll have the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which will be negative 2 minus 1 times dy dx, or just dy dx. Remember, because we're taking the derivative with respect to x, and this term has a y, minus the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator, which would just be 1. Now we have to perform some algebra and perform a substitution for the first derivative. Let's go ahead and distribute here. We'll have negative 2x minus x times dy dx. But remember, dy dx is this quotient here, or this quotient in yellow. Let's go ahead and use the form in green. And then here we'll have plus 2x plus y. The nice thing about this product here is these x's simplify out. So now let's clear these parentheses and then we'll combine like terms. We'll have x squared in the denominator, and we'll have negative 2x. Here we're going to have plus 2x. And we'll have plus y plus 2x plus y. So let's simplify this again. These are opposites. So it looks like we'll have 2x plus 2y in the numerator. Now this would be our second derivative, but a lot of times you will see this expressed in a different form. So let's continue this on the next slide. Let's go ahead and factor the numerator, factor out the 2. So again, this is our second derivative, but what you'll notice is if we multiply both the numerator and denominator by x, we would have the second derivative equal to 
2 times the quantity x squared plus xy all over x cubed. And the reason why you might see this done is, notice that x squared plus xy is part of the original equation. The original equation was given as x squared plus xy equals 4. So using the given equation, we can replace x squared plus xy with 4, which does simplify our second derivative. So we have 8 all over x cubed for our second derivative. So sometimes it can be a little tricky if you're trying to match an answer shown on the back of a textbook or in an online homework system. So hopefully you found this helpful. I think it might be easy to stop right here and forget about trying to perform this step here to simplify the second root of as much as possible.